Um, for those of you that don't know, my name is Chris Piper. I am the commissioner for the Virginia Department of Elections. I want to welcome you all to Virginia's first statewide risk limiting audit. It's very exciting uh, to be here today. And so uh, I think this is a, a long time coming and something that Virginia is going to be doing for uh, many years to come. And, uh, and it's, it's a really exciting day for all of us here. So I wanna begin uh, by thanking everyone who helped pull this event together. Uh, our elect staff, um, uh, specifically Karen Hoyt Stewart, who has been uh, coordinating the uh, efforts on, on our side, but also uh, Michael Dixon on our training staff, uh, as well as uh, Andrea uh, Gaines and communications. Uh, lots of others have been uh, pouring in. Keith Ballmer uh, has really worked hard from our liaison side on this, but uh, all, all members of the staff have contributed in some form or fashion uh, to getting us here today. So thank you to uh, the great staff we have here at the Department of Elections. I also wanna thank our partners at Voting Works. You'll get to know them quite a bit. Um, they are Ginny Vanderroost and uh, Monica Childers from Voting Works. They are helping us uh, uh, coordinate this as well and they've done great work. They've uh, worked all over the country. Um, and they're doing great work with us, getting us all organized and ready to go for our first statewide audit. Um, I'd also like to thank the members of the State Board of Elections for their support on this effort. Um, and we will be reporting uh, the results to them and, and, and keeping them uh, informed along the way. Um, but of course, none of this could happen without the hard work of our general registrars and electoral board members. A statewide risk limiting audit is uh, a team effort. And of course, it's absolutely critical that our registrars and electoral board members are involved uh, in every aspect of this. So we wanna thank you all for the uh, hard work, but also at the end of the day, uh, Virginia's successful elections in 2020 were absolutely the result of the hard work, the long hours, the sacrifices that uh, those members uh, throughout the Commonwealth uh, took to ensure the integrity of the election. And this statewide risk limiting audit is just one more step uh, to proving all of the great work that they did to ensure our uh, election was safe and secure and as successful as it was. So uh, as you know, in recent years, our country has seen a dramatic shift in how many Americans, how many Americans view our elections. Uh, there are a large number of voters who question whether our elections are fair. A risk limiting audit provides election administrators with the evidence needed to prove that their election systems counted the ballots in election accurately. The process helps to show that the voting equipment and methods used to tally the votes did what they were supposed to do. This statewide risk limiting audit is important, and we hope that what we do will help reinforce trust in the integrity of our elections. Our message is simple. Every voter deserves to know that their vote counts, that their vote really matters. We are committed to ensuring that Virginians voters are confident that our elections are fair. So just to give you a little background about what we are doing and how we are doing it, over the past two years, we have held risk limiting audit pilots uh, for about 35 localities in the Commonwealth. For this audit, we will be tallying two contests in the risk limiting audit, the presidential election and the US Senate race uh, from the 2020 November general election. With a statewide risk limiting audit, all participating localities will provide assurance that the outcome of the election is correct. Each locality will create a ballot manifest of how many ballot, ballot cards were counted in the election. A public meeting will be held on February 22nd at 3 p.m. to generate the random seed number. Uh, at that time, 20 10-sided dice will be rolled to generate that 20-digit number. 
The 20 digit number is used by the audit software to randomly select the ballots to be retrieved. The retrieved ballots will be tallied, tallied by audit review boards and then put into the audit software provided by Voting Works. When the audit is complete, we will announce the results on March 2nd at 1130 AM. So uh, I may have stolen some of their thunder, but I promise you, you'll be uh, very excited to hear uh, what uh, Ginny and Monica are about to share with us. So I'm going to turn it over to our partners at Voting Works. I really want to thank them for uh, all the hard work and, and education that they've provided us through this process. And so uh, with that, Ginny, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Chris. Um, let me just share my screen. Um, I don't have a lot this morning. I just want to go go over the ballot manifest part just one more time for you all. This morning we're opening Arlo up so that you'll be able to upload your uh, ballot manifest. So uh, let me uh, move some things off the screen. You don't need to watch me talk twice here. <laughs> um, <laughs> So uh, just a reminder of what a ballot manifest is. It's a list of all of your ballot containers and the number of ballots in each container. I've talked this through um, with a few of you in the last week. Um, feel free, of course, to reach out if you have questions. Uh, basically, you know, a two column spreadsheet. One column is titled batch name. The other is titled number of ballots. Remember the batch name is unique to your jurisdiction. So whatever your containers are called or whatever your batches are called, that's what you want in that batch name column. There's just a bunch of different examples in that um, spreadsheet on the screen. Um, does have to be saved as a CSV file. So if you're using Excel, just do use the save as function and select a CSV file. There are multiple CSV file formats in Word or I'm sorry, Excel. And that's okay. Any of those should work. So just, just select. I always tell everyone to just select the first one you see, and, and that should be good enough. Um, we want to make sure that you're including all of your ballots. We've had questions about that. So any uh, counted provisional ballots, anything that you tabulated, you know, in a, a different time frame than you typically tabulate, those are some of the ballots we often see missed. So make sure all those are included applicable to you. Um, make sure you've got precinct day, election, absentee, central absentee processing, all of those ballots. Uh, and some of you have said that you have envelopes within a container and you know how many ballots are in each envelope. If that is um, the case in your jurisdiction, that's great. You can just um, list them um, on their own line individually, and that'll actually save you some time when you go to retrieve ballots later. So instead of just saying there's 471 ballots in this one container, that's uh, the example on the screen, you can break it up. So precinct one, or um, I'm, I'm thinking more for an example for you based on the conversations I've had, it might be something like container one, envelope uh, precinct three or envelope um, uh, sample township or something like that, right? Yeah, I, it seems like your envelopes are based on precincts um, versus versus batches. So whatever, again, works for you, for you to understand, hey, if I open this container, um, I'm going to want to grab this envelope, what would I call it? Um, precinct name is, is likely what you're looking at, or maybe you'll have, you have some kind of naming convention or number system. Uh, and then, of course, um, you do have some of you have these uh, these labels. I've I've seen different versions, so some of them don't have that information on them. Um, your ballot record reports might have the envelope information, and then a bunch of you have uh, CAP ballots, and you just know you have 15 boxes and 30,000 ballots, and you're wondering. How in the world do you determine the number? So this is something I wanted to spend a, just a little bit of time on this morning because this is something uh, what I've been walking a lot of you through as we've been troubleshooting the last few days. Uh, and this is how you would determine the number of ballots are in each container based on weight. Um, ideally, this is not how we want to find out how many ballots are in a container, right? We want that information recorded as they're tabulated, as they're put into the containers. Um, but we don't, you know, if you don't have that information right now, that's okay. If, you're, if that's not part of your process that you used for November, um, that's okay. This is a way to, to get a, get pretty close. 
So what we would have you do is calculate the weight of each box or the total weight essentially of all of the boxes. So in this example, you've got three boxes. One's 25 pounds, one's 30, and one is 22 for a total of 77 pounds. Um, and then based on your vote history and credit, CAP that you have 27,634. These are all made up numbers. In fact, I think uh, these might be a little light for that number of ballots, but this is more just to give you that math example. Um, you take that number of ballots that you know that should be in across all of those boxes, divide it by the weight, you'll get a number. You use that number then to, to multiply the weight of each individual box to get a number of ballots. So you see the 25 pound box ends up having 8,972 ballots. Um, in this example too, if you see, if you were to add up the 8,972, the 10,766 and the 7,895, you would actually end up with 27,003 ballots. So remember, we do want that total number, right? We do want to count for every single ballot. So we would up, uh, we would make one of those boxes have one more ballot so that you have the total number of ballots that you have. Um, one thing too, I want to make sure that you are doing if you're, if you're using this method to determine the number of ballots is make sure you are labeling your boxes. So when you label that 25 pound box, um, make sure it says box one or whatever, whatever you wanna name it. I, again, we don't care what you name your containers but go through all of this effort and then end up at the end with a ballot manifest that you can't max match back up to the boxes without having to weigh them again. So if you make sure, you know, just make sure each of these boxes gets a name um, that matches your ballot manifest as you are doing this process. Uh, so once you have uh, the manifest, you're going to Arlo and I'm just going to demo that for you right now. Switch to the other screen. Let me. All right. So this is the Arlo screen. Um, you're going to get all of the instructions in an email here shortly. Uh, the URL is arlo.voting.works. You will log into your audit. Enter your email address. And a code is going to be sent to your email. Uh, I don't know if wherever our codes are from, if it's a little uh, cold where that is, but they've been coming through kind of slow this morning. They're usually pretty quick. But this is what the email looks like. This is one I used earlier. Um, and actually now you can see that the new one is there. You just take this code and enter it here. You'll never have a password. You'll always get a code if you're going to log into Arlo. Um, and as we talked about in training, make sure that you have um, root at auth0.com whitelisted as well as RLA at vx.support. Those are the emails where, they, where, where you'll receive emails from us from. Um, also check your spam filters because, uh, you know, again, you guys have some great protections on your email as you should. And so that sometimes sends our emails in different directions and then they really should go. Um, so when you log in, you're going to have a screen like this. You have your locality name, click on that button. And here's your screen. All it is, find the file that you created. Uh, ballot manifest that you you made, right? And then simply click upload file. And you'll see a message here, upload successful, tells you, um, also tells you up here that you've successfully uploaded, but the audit hasn't started. The audit's not going to start until everyone has uploaded their ballot manifest. So every locality must have their ballot manifest in, in order for us to start on Monday. Um, so, uh, the deadline is very, very important. Um, and you get this done right away. Sometimes you expect to see something new. You're not going to see that until, until Monday. Um, if for some reason you realize you made a mistake, um, or uh, Arlo will also tell you if you made mistakes. So if you need to fix anything, uh, you just use this replace file button. And again, you go through the process of finding your file where you saved it and uh, re uploading it. So that's the to do between now and Monday. That's 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 everything. Um, you will receive 
I did have a uh, we are receive an email from us shortly in the next hour um, that has again all these instructions step by step. So this is an example I sent to myself this morning. So it's ready to go. I just need to upload a few more email addresses and and then you will receive that. Uh, and that's all I have for you this morning. Um, please don't hesitate to uh, email us, call us. I know I have, uh, I owe Angie a call back. I'll be doing that here shortly, Angie, if you're on and listening. Um, but we're happy to help you with any of the questions you, you have along the way. I, Thank you, Jenny. Uh, that was great. And we Oh, can you hear me? All right. <laughs> uh, thank you, Jenny. That was great. We appreciate it. And yes, uh, I, I heard you say at the end there that you'll be following up uh, with some of the information provided uh, as well. I also know that Jenny and our staff are have been available and will continue to be available to assist and answer questions along the way. Um, we understand that this is new for many of us and uh, we will not leave uh anybody behind uh, we want to make sure everybody's getting all their questions answered uh we continue to work on uh additional information to provide to you all as well so uh i think that's it um that we have today if somebody is if i'm wrong let me know but i'm um, looking at the agenda i think we're we're closing up so thank you jenny thank you to monica thank you again to all the staff that have um participated uh, and getting us to this date and uh, want to remind everybody again at on February 22nd uh, at 3 p.m. We will hold the dice roll for random seed number and on March 2nd at 1130 a.m. We will present the results of the audit. Uh, we will be continuing to send out information and I'll thank you all again for attending and good luck. Uh, happy auditing. It's going to be great. I promise. <laughs> Thanks again, everybody. Have a great day.